Mr. Hoyer, I really have to ask you for your take on the European economy before we move on to anything else. Yesterday there was huge euphoria <laughs> in markets because of the vaccine. Today it does seem that the market has taken a step back to really reassess what's happening. And we have coronavirus still very much coming into play. So do you think we can avoid a double dip recession or not? Well, that's not that easy to be answered. The fact, however, is that since yesterday we see light at the end of the tunnel and that is not the train coming the other way. It is real uh, light and hope. And therefore, it, is, it was not a surprise that the stock markets yesterday reacted so strongly and that a little bit uh, it was seen as an overdose. So uh, I think we are going to into, into rational developments in the next uh, hours and days. Right, but are you more optimistic at this point or would you say the uncertainty really remains? I mean, I know you mentioned the vaccine is great news and it really is uh, great news has been done very quickly. But when it comes to the visibility over the next six months, it does seem like it's still very clouded. Well, so, but imagine that, that, that this vaccine would not appear at the horizon now. So uh, it, is, it gives hope and I think it will, be, will have a trigger on effect on, on other parts of, of the economy. And uh, from, from that point of view, I'm, I'm really optimistic. It was the, the game changer, which we so urgently needed. And we, as EIB, we and, are and very proud because- And do you think that's going to feed? Yeah, well, yeah, say, and, we, and, we, and is that going to uh, feed? And I guess, go ahead. We are just so proud because we had, we had detected more or less so this this, uh, this development with uh, biotech and we were the first ones to, to commit to that company. And I think it's a really good news and encouraging for our own people to see that uh, obviously we have the capacity to, to discover these treasures. Right, and that was uh, my next question. You know, just the, just the idea, the promise that a vaccine could be uh, coming in the short term, is that going to feed through real investment in Europe? We know that's declined. We know that companies have been worried about uh, taking on that investment, investing looking forward because of the uncertainty. Do you think that could feed into the real economy in any way? I definitely hope so, because the development of investment activities over the last month was really disquieting. And uh, sometimes people were acting in a not necessarily rational way, because everybody in our opinion polls tells us the worst, the weakest part of our development is investment activity. And then if you ask the big companies or the small companies, whoever, uh, where do you cut the first? Then it is very often it's said, well, we need to cut on investment. And that is, of course, uh, something that worries me a lot. We need to invest into modernization, into new technologies, into development. And uh, I think with a with a beacon of hope like uh, BioNTech and Pfizer, now there is a, a, an encouragement to go back into investment, into modernization. Right, and if you look at the rally that we saw yesterday, one part of it, of course, was led by the vaccine. The other one uh, was led by this idea, it's particularly here in Europe, that the European budget talks are finally moving and that we could get a deal uh, in the next few days. If we do get this European budget, if the recovery fund goes ahead, I do wonder how is that going to affect you? How is that going to affect the flow of money to countries that need it? And do you actually see a feasible pickup in investment in the second half of the next year? I'm very optimistic that this might be, that will take place. Um, the, the conclusion of the budget this negotiations week, are it gets done crucial. this week? I, I, I'm not involved in this. Do you think it gets done this week? Is I, that what I, you hear? I, I think it, we are very, very, very close. Uh, and uh, this is important for us as well, because we cooperate so closely with the European Union and in particular with the European Commission that for us, for, us, for our business planning, it's important to have this, uh, this stalemate broken. And uh, can I just ask you, you know, uh, when you look at specifically the recovery fund, and we know that's been driving uh, markets higher for a while now, and it's kept those yields very low. Uh, you know, I do wonder, there are countries that have already hinted, I am interested in the grants, but not so much on the uh, loans. I'm not so interested in the credit. Is that a good idea to just tap the grants and forget about the credit line? Well, of course, as a banker, I'm interested in, in giving out loans. Uh, so uh, I see that uh, the, the necessity to come up also with grant support was given. Uh, whether the balance is right or not, it's not my, my business to decide. I'm quite sure that the needs for financing of investment in particular in the next months will be so enormous that uh, in addition to the to these grants given by the European Union, a lot of investment, a lot of loan activity will be necessary in order to get the machine rolling.
So I do wonder, you know, if you look at a country like Italy, how are you going to convince them to do that? Because it does seem that politically this is not going to fly. There's still a stigma when it comes to uh, loans in Europe. And, and potentially they would rather not spend as much, but just keep a grant. So how are you going to make a case? I think uh, as far as EIB is concerned, we have a very good record because uh, we are a bank to a large extent driven by engineers and by, 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 by science. And that means that uh, people see, investors see that if we go into an investment with a specific company or branch, then this is going to be a good investment and the others will follow to finance. So for our business, this is not uh, an impediment. And just as a very uh, final question, you could argue the final element that, that we need uh, in Europe uh, this year to kind of just seal it is uh, that Brexit deal. I do wonder, uh, what, what do you hear? Do, do you hear from all of the European officials that I'm sure you're on the phone with that a deal is more likely now than it was a week ago? Well, this is I, a I Mikado situation. Phone, so I have to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Mikado situation. Whoever moves first has lost. So we are going to see that, that game being continued until the very, very end. But in addition to this Brexit uh, uncertainty, we have now a huge opportunity with the outcome of the U.S. elections and the hope that transatlantic relations right. can be restored and what I count on.